Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're continuing our series in Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. I mentioned last time that we would be finishing up shortly because I was going over the spells, but I failed to mention that in this book, Sebastian Crow's, the Dungeon Dudes have actually invented not just a set of brand new tools, but also a brand new set of feats that go along with these tools. It turns out that tools are something that are highly undervalued in a standard D&D game, and the idea that a person could be proficient in tools and it be useful is something that often doesn't come up. A lot of optimizers believe tools are ribbon features. And the Dungeon Dudes aren't a big fan of that. They like the idea of using tools in powerful ways that can really change up the game. Um, I've listed all of the tool feats that are here. Um, there are 13 of them, and each one is linked to a different tool proficiency. Basically, if you have proficiency in the tool, you can then uh, take the feat, and it buffs you in some measurable way. Before we get into the list, though, I'd like to let you know. Relax Fantasy Review has memberships. For just a dollar a month, you can support me here on YouTube and get a couple benefits. First, you get a little badge next to your name in the comments, letting folks know that you're a supporter. But also you get early access to my videos. I upload videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I upload them a day early for members only. If that interests you, you can click the join button just below the video down there. I'd love to see you in the comments. Uh, and if it doesn't interest you, that's totally fine. I'm still thankful for you just being here. Liking and subscribing to the channel is very, very helpful, so thank you. So we'll start off with an easy one. Advanced Palette. This feat requires that you be proficient in cook's utensils or a brewer's kit. When you have this feat, you gain two benefits. First of all, during a short rest, you can give your party the maximum recovery using their hit dice. When you take a short rest, you roll your hit dice, add your constitution modifier, and you can recover that many hit points. This allows you to just maximize those dice for the party, giving your short rests quite a bit more value, especially if you've got some barbarians and fighters in the party. You can do this once per long rest, so it's, it's a specific short rest you get to do this. But you also gain um, a feature that you can use once per long rest. When you finish the long rest, you grant everyone a heroic resistance points which is legendary resistance. That's right. Whenever a creature that has one of these heroic resistance points fails a saving throw, they can use that point to succeed it automatically instead. By just having Cook's utensils and taking this advanced palette feat, you can grant your party a legendary resistance point every day. One per day. But one legendary resistance is monstrously strong, especially at the lower levels. You take this feat at level one, if you are a class or a background that gets tools, you don't even, this doesn't even have to define your class. There are backgrounds that let you choose tools that, uh, you know, are yours to pick. And if you take the cook's utensils and you're a variant human or a custom lineage, you could have this feat straight away and be granting legendary resistance points for save or suck effects right at the beginning of the game. This feat is 10 out of 10. It is stupidly strong. And it's great even if you just look at the short rest ability. But the other one just makes it really strong. The next one you get is the Arcane, uh, the arcane Fletcher feat. This requires that you have proficiency in carpenter's tools, woodcarver's tools, or tinker tools. Once you have this feat, Every long rest, you get to take double your proficiency bonus. So at the beginning of the game, that's four. And by the end of the game, it's 12. You take that many pieces of ammunition that would go to a weapon, so arrows, crossbow bolts, etc. And you imbue them with elemental damage. Uh, 1d4 of the standard fire, frost, lightning, etc. And... Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, 1d4 damage isn't a lot to write home about. Uh, you know, taking a Hex spell or a Hunter's Mark spell would do you better. But the fact that you can 
Uh, you don't have to use a spell slot on this. It's just automatic on the short rest. Doesn't take concentration. It's it's not bad. I grant this feat a 7 out of 10. Then uh, you have the Demolitions Expert feat. Uh, this one requires you have alchemist tools as a proficiency. And it simply says that once per long rest, you can create an explosive. This depends on your level. It starts as alchemist fire right from level one, if you have the feat then. And then slowly gets bigger and bigger until eventually you can build a grenade. And yes, grenades are in the base rules. They're in the Dungeon Master's Guide. I believe they do 5d6 damage. I'd have to double check. But, I mean, they were stronger than Alchemist Fire, to be sure. So you've got a scaling explosive once per long rest that I would consider a equivalent to a low-level spell. I mean, I'd rather have a fireball than a grenade. But, you know, once explosive is not terrible, I don't know if it's worth spending a whole feat on. Uh, I give this feat 6 out of 10. Definitely a, a lesser pick. Next, you've got three expert um, equipment feats. You've got... Expert armor smith, armor smith, which require you to have smith tools or leather workers tools. Expert bowyer, which requires you have wood carver or carpenter. And expert weaponsmith, which just requires smith's tools. Each one of these three feats gives you proficiency in charisma checks with individuals that would work in this field. So if you're armor smith or uh, you meet a person who makes bows and arrows, or you meet a weaponsmith, you have proficiency on your charisma checks with those people. And then you gain a benefit depending on the feat. For the armorsmith, you, gain, you can grant one set of armor an elemental resistance. So fi once again, fire, cold, lightning, etc. This resistance is indefinite until you use the feature on another set of armor. So you can only do it once. Which is fine. Damage resistance is great to hand out to a party member uh, for specific situations. Um, and what's even better is that at the higher levels of play, this becomes damage immunity, which is vastly superior to resistance. Um, it's not like... It would be nice if you could do it proficiency bonus, and it d I'd rather, personally, you could do this to half your proficiency bonus... Uh, sets of armor, and it just grant resistance, not immunity. But I'm not going to turn immunity down, so I give this a 9 out of 10. The Bowyer Feats says that you can take a bow, so a single ranged weapon. You can grant it extra range, 10 extra feet for uh, your proficiency bonus number, so that would be anywhere from 20 to 60 extra feet. Remove the disadvantage from long range firing, which is something that you normally would need to take the sharpshooter feat to get. And you can give it an expanded crit range of 19 to 20. Effectively, just buffing up a person's uh, ranged weapon. It's a shame that it slightly overlaps with Sharpshooter, but honestly, I still like this feat a lot. Expanded crit range and um, extra range, even further than your standard Sharpshooter, I think that's solid, and I think that's well worth an 8 out of 10. And then finally, the Weaponsmith variety of this you can simply grant one melee weapon a plus bonus, like it was a magic weapon, uh, equal to half your proficiency bonus rounded down. So you start with a plus one, and by the end of the game, you can make a plus three weapon. And similar to the armor smith and bowyer one, you can only do this with one weapon, and then it stays on there until uh, you would use it on a different weapon. So that feat a little less strong than damage, resistance, and immunity, and... Uh, the extra range in firing, but I still think it's worth a 7 out of 10. I'm not sure whether or not it would be uh, really useful unless you're in a very low magic weapon campaign. Like, you have to be level 17 before you can grant a plus 3 with this, and by that point, half of your people are going to have plus 3 weapons anyway, unless your DM's really stingy. So, in my games, this would be a 7 out of 10 feat. But let's move on to one that doesn't have to do with upgrading equipment. Investigative Mind. Now this one has three sets of tools you can have, and these are all new tools that the Dungeon Dudes have invented. Exorcist tools, Vampire Hunters tools, or Investigator tools, which, you know, largely ha contain the abilities that they sound like. And once you have a f uh, proficiency in one of these tools, you can take Investigative Mind. It's a half feat, granting you a plus one to intelligence, so that's awesome. 
and it gives you expertise in the investigation skill. So, love expertise, and investigation's a really good skill to have it in. But the truly broken part of this feat is the questions. When you're investigating an area, you get the ability to break the fourth wall. You can ask the DM a number of questions equal to your proficiency bonus that ha simply have yes or no answers. It's very simple questions, but the DM will provide you with a truthful answer. You can do this once per long rest when investigating an area or an object or something like that. And it very much resembles the legend lore spell, which lets you go gather knowledge magically. That's a fifth level spell. So this is a feat that grants you that, plus a skill expertise, plus a plus one in intelligence. Holy mackerel, this is a great feat, and I give it 10 out of 10. The next one is Medical Expert. For this one, you need proficiency in three of the invented toolkits from the Dungeon Dudes again. Occultist's kit, uh, exorcist tools, or a doctor's bag. This one grants you uh, another half feat, so it's a plus one to intelligence or wisdom, your choice. And it allows you, during a short rest, to do a couple things. First, it allows you to treat um, one level of exhaustion, uh, one disease, or a condition that could normally be cured by lesser restoration. Paralyzed, poisoned, blinded, or deafened. Um, so... What I find interesting about this is that you can remove exhaustion on a short rest, which makes certain traits that are in Drakenheim, the gaining exhaustion when you lose Eldritch Contamination, when you purge it, um, this makes this a little easier to pull off because a person with this feat can just remove exhaustion. Um, the other thing this gives is that during a short rest, you can grant extra hit dice equal to your proficiency bonus, to the people who are taking the short rest. So, if you're, you know, in the mid-tiers of the game, and everyone's taking a short rest, they have like 10 hit dice to use, rather than using most of them, you grant them an extra four, and then once they've used those up, then they can start using the ones that they have saved, and that gives you a lot more longevity when it comes to the long rests. This, uh, you know, definitely leans into the advanced palate thing, except it's medically based instead of food based. I think that these powers are great, and I think that the simple removing exhaustion alone makes this feat amazing. All the other stuff makes it great, and the half feat pushes it up to 10 out of 10 for me. Next one we have is Occult Practitioner. This one requires you have... Uh, proficiency in occultists or exorcist tools, and have an ability to cast a spell. So spellcasting or pack magic. Or I suppose apothecary magic. Um, it grants you a plus one to your intelligence or your charisma, so it's another half feat, and it allows you, once per long rest, to put a spell inside your tools. Uh, you can cast the spell equal to your proficiency bonus without using a spell slot once per long rest. So... If you're in uh, level 5, you can do this with a third level spell slot, and uh, you could cast a free fireball right out of your bag. This is a really, really nice ability. It's just once per long rest, though, so it's not stupid powerful, and even at the highest tiers of games, it's a six level spell, but it's still a six level spell. It's got to be an action cast. I say that a free spell slot is worth 7 out of 10, and it's a half feat, so let's not forget that. And the next one we get is Potions Expert. Uh, this one requires that you have uh, proficiency in Alchemist Tools, the Herbalism Kit, or uh, the Occultist Kit. And it grants you, just like the Equipment Feat, it grants you proficiency in Charisma Checks with other potion makers or potion sellers, people in the potion business. And it allows you to create a healing potion once per long rest for free, as long as you've got your toolkit with you. Uh, it starts off as a regular healing potion, and then goes up to greater, and then goes up to superior uh, as you level up. Unfortunately, this isn't something you can stockpile. If you don't use the healing potion during the adventuring day, it goes inert after 24 hours. So you can't use this feat to stockpile healing potions and sell them on. But it's still 
a nice thing to have a free healing potion every day. Um, saves you gold, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I say this is an 8 out of 10 feet. It's good, not amazing. Then you get Proficient Poisoner. Proficient Poisoner requires a proficiency in the Poisoner's Kit or the Medicine or Herbalism Kit. You gain Resistance to Poison Damage, which is great. I love Poison Resistance on any character, really. It's one of the more common damage types in D&D. And you also can create a poison once per long rest, just like the healing uh, potion, which is less valuable than a healing potion, but it also scales. It starts as a basic poison and then goes up into stronger poisons later in the game. Poisons are tricky to use. Um, they're a mechanic that definitely needs work. I hope they do that in the next edition. But having a free poison that you can use once per day is no... Like, if you've built your character around poison use, this is a great feat. It really is. Um, other than that, the poison resistance is still valuable, and I grant this feat 8 out of 10 as well. Almost done here. The next one is the Scribe feat. This one requires proficiency in calligraphers, uh, cartographers, or investigators tools, and the ability to cast a spell. Um, once per long rest, you can create a spell scroll with a spell equal to your proficiency bonus. So this is very similar to the Occult Practitioner feat, except instead of doing it with a toolkit, you're doing it with a spell scroll. This is good. It's something that is quite powerful. I think it's a shame that, um, the spell scroll, just like the poisons and the potions, have to be used within the next 24 hours. But it is a spell scroll that you can hand off. It doesn't have to be used by you, unlike the Occult Practitioner feat. I think that that fact alone means that it is a little more valuable. You can share the load with other spellcasters uh, with this and give them spells that they may not necessarily have prepared or that they might not even know, as long as they have the ability to cast them in some way. So, yeah, I say 8 out of 10 for this one. The final one is called Trap Maker. This one requires proficiency in thieves or tinker tools. And once per long rest, you can create a trap. There's a little more detail in this feat, detailing, like, restraining traps, damaging traps. Uh, at later levels, you can create, like, gas traps or paralyzing traps. Uh, you can even create just alarms. You can create once per long rest, and the spell, the save on these traps is either based on your intelligence or your dexterity, so you don't have to necessarily pump your intelligence to make this work. Traps are finicky. Uh, they're one of those things that, again, you have to kind of build your character around the idea of battlefield setup, but it only takes an action to set the trap. So if you have just a moment before a fight, or in an area, you can set a trap up with relative ease. And I think that despite the fact that players are not typically building traps, this creates an avenue for that. Not the strongest thing. Uh, Spellcasting would be stronger than these traps, but they're not bad. And, and I think that it's worth a 7 out of 10 for sure. All in all, these feats are really, really interesting. Having to use tool proficiencies as prerequisites is something that we haven't seen before. And I'd love to see more of it, to be honest with you. And I think the Dungeon Dudes are breaking interesting ground here. I really, really like a few of them as they provide powers that go well above and beyond uh, what a normal toolkit would provide. And others that simply expand a little bit and, and grow a tool set's power. But I'm going to say that Dungeon Dudes, you've done a great thing here. And I love the fact that you're expanding tools. Please keep it up. And, uh, yeah, these are great feats. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Have a look for the Join button down there, as well as a link to Ghostfire Gaming, where you can get Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim for yourself. It's written by the Dungeon Dudes, my fellow YouTubers, and I highly recommend that you check their channel out and their book out for yourself. Have a good one, my friends.